welcome back to my channel. We are now part two. I'm gonna be doing the same thing with the questions that you guys asked on Fay Home. I really hope you guys took away from part one and you loved them. Um, I loved having you guys on the channel and I also loved getting to know some of you and helping you hopefully with any of your situations. So I am now gonna continue with the interviews. Hope you guys love it. And um, hopefully I'll have some more of you on very, very soon. So we've got now, I've got the beautiful Daisy with me. She is a welcome to the YouTube, my babe. Thank you so, so much for obviously answering my questions earlier. Hopefully I can help, fingers crossed. So this was actually a, another massive question that lots of you asked that is a massive minefield. It's a huge minefield when you come to renting, especially within the UK. So I'm gonna let Daisy remind me what her question is and then fingers crossed, fingers crossed I'll be able to help, all right? One sec, take that away with you. Um, okay, so my question was that I'm currently on a visa, um, like a working visa. Um, so my background is that I'm Canadian and I'm here in the UK on a visa and I'm looking to first time renter to, to rent in London. Right. Perfect. So, where are you at the moment? Um, I am in London. Okay, fine. I was like, oh my God, it must be like really late. <laughs> God, sorry, love. Um, so, the right to rent within the UK is an absolute minefield. So, when it comes to your visa, regardless of what visa you are on, as long as you can come into the UK, and as long as your visa covers you for the length of your tenancy you are secure. So you should get a year tenancy, or you sorry, you should get a year visa. Um, so the problem is though, my visa, um, the visa that I'm currently on is will run out at the end of the year or towards the end of the year, but then I'm expecting to get that renewed by where I work. Right. Um, so I'm just wondering, like, would it be an issue um, knowing that currently my visa says say, um, it expires in just say, let's say August, but then I know that I can, I'm going to get that renewed by work um, so that I can continue staying mm -hmm. here. Um, but I don't have that renewal currently. I probably wouldn't be in process until probably later in the year. So I don't know if it'll be an issue with me um, looking to rent. Right. Because if I, exactly. So no, it should, it will not be an issue with you renting. So either you can apply for your, you can either apply for your visa. And then once you kind of, you know, that you're going to get it, even if you don't have your physical visa through yet, you can get, you can ring the home office. You can get a letter or email from the home office to say that they're processing it. And there isn't a problem with your application. Um, what I will say is as long as you will probably need to go for a six month tenancy initially in the UK so that it doesn't end beforehand. However, it's not your issue to deal with because you have the legal right to rent within the UK. If you have a visa, it will be down to your letting agent to ensure that you, they check up and make sure you've got your new visa by the time your, your tenancy is due for renewal. If the um, the person that's renting, if they are looking for like a long term lease, though, would it be a problem knowing that, say, like you just said, I can probably only go for six months first and then renew? If they're looking for a year lease, does that put me at a disadvantage? So what you could then offer, if it was me, I'd be saying, okay, cool, um, I, I, I'm happy to do a twelve month contract. However, if we could pop a six month break clause in there. So you have still got a 12 month contract. They have still got, obviously, they know that you want to stay for 12 months or longer. However, with the six month break clause in that, it actually helps the agent as well as you, as well as the landlord, just in case for whatever reason, your visa didn't get renewed, you'd be able to say, look guys, my visa isn't going to be being renewed. So obviously I need to go back to Canada. So actually you're helping them um, at the same time and you'll be upfront and honest. And I, I, that's how I would play it. I would be like, okay, if you want a 12 month contract, fine but i'll be honest it's not it isn't unheard of for tenants to want six months like initially you can always put it down to you don't have to even say it's down to the fact of your visa as long as your visa covers you for the length of your tenancy so as long as you've got a six month and you've got that break clause you are secure and you're safe and you're covering yourself um you can say look well i want i want longer 
but I might not like the area. I might not like my neighbors. I might need somewhere. I, I might be working somewhere different. Like you, you don't know. And it might not be down to you personally. Um, you know, you can even put down to the fact, I want to know what my landlord's like, actually. I want to know that he does maintenance issues around the house. I want to know that he cares for me as a tenant before I sign. But once I've done the six months, I'm happy to sign a 12 month. But for me and what I would, my advice to you would be do a 12 month contract, but ask for a six month break clause in it. And just say, look, it's just down to my visa. I know there won't be a problem. However, if it is, then I wouldn't want you guys to be in a pickle and I wouldn't want to be in a pickle either. Um, but I am planning on staying long term. No, that is actually super helpful. Thank you so much. Yay! We got another one in the bag. <laughs> Remember, 12 month break clause, six, no, 12 month contract, six month break clause. <laughs> yeah. Okay, awesome. No, thank you so much. It's actually. <laughs> really 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 helps me no worries at all thank you so much daisy for coming on i really appreciate it i've got the lovely tess with me oh she again asked so many questions so many questions that lots of others asked um so i'm gonna let tess can i also just mention that tess is across the other side of the world right now and even though it's 10 30 here it's actually 9 30 in the morning for this lovely lady so she's just got up and i'm just going to bed <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to let you ask the question and then obviously we'll go through the answers together. Is that okay? Yeah, okay. Perfect. Here she is. Um, so my question was about um, rental applications and, you know, there's a lot of the same sort of applications that I'm sure you would see, you know, like families with young kids or whatever. And I just wanted to know, like, when you're looking at them, what, what makes like a certain month stand out what do you think you could like what's good to put on an ap application that you'd be and you'd go oh you know they stand out from the rest yeah so when it comes to application um I have obviously, I've done already, I know I've done one YouTube already on regards to the application, but it didn't really cover what agents, what landlords look for in particular. Um, so for me, what I would say stand out is that I would want somebody, I'd always say to a landlord, I'd rather somebody look, make sure that I'm getting the right person that's going to look after the property and be an easy tenant to deal with rather than someone that's in there, you know, even more so earning more money or so much that they haven't got children. Um, I'd always rather have somebody in a property that would look after it and be an easy tenant. So when going through the application process, one of the best things that you can do is always revert it back to the landlord and be like, if somebody says to you, okay, you're looking for a six or a 12 month contract, Refer back and be like, I'm happy to do whatever the landlord wants to do. You know, you're going to try and be a bit more hands-on with the property rather than... There's nothing worse than with a landlord um, as an agent having to ring a landlord every sort of five minutes and being like, oh, you've got to have this done, you've got to do this, you've got to do that. Although it is their, it is their responsibility to do, um, a lot of the time... It's like a lot of tenants don't want to take any responsibility and actually it will really make you stand out on an application definitely to a landlord if you are willing and prepared to treat it as your home and not just your house um so that's one of my biggest bits of advice um because anyone can say that you know they're earning more money there's always going to be someone out there that's earning more money there's always going to be someone out there that's got no children or less children there's always but so but actually what landlords want is to know that their house is being treated properly and they aren't going to have to at the end they spend more money than necessary because at the end of the day, a landlord does only buy a property for an investment. It isn't there to not make them money. Um, yeah. But that would be my biggest advice to tenants because a lot of people miss that out. A lot of people actually forget that. And also, I said this on my last YouTube, but be as nice as possible as you can to the agent because believe me, all that information is going back. Um, so I can, most of my applications that used to take place would be like, the landlord would always say to me, well, what do you think, Faye? And when a landlord asks you that, you've got to give them the information. So if it was me, I'd be like, oh, okay, well, I would personally, I got on really well with Tess. I found her really easy to deal with. She was great at the viewing. That's how I would be as an agent rather than somebody that's really rude and abrupt to an agent because you wouldn't believe the amount of people that are so rude <laughs> to agents. Um, 
that actually it goes it, it goes a really long way like, like anyone would just say like being polite goes really I know it's really easy for me to say but being polite goes such a long way does that answer your question yeah 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 so I, 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 so I think yeah I like I say anyone's gonna comment on your job or what you do or your credit there are questions that are going to be asked regardless but my biggest bit of advice would be polite and also let the landlord know that you're there to treat it as a home, not just as a house, or that you are tr- going to treat it as a typical renter that just wants, like, you know, that, that you're happy just to muck in and do a bit around the house if needs be and be an easy tenant to deal with. Yeah, <laughs> not be annoying. <laughs> not be, oh, I didn't say that. Tess said that. Don't be annoying, okay? Yeah. Tess is to blame. Don't be annoying. <laughs> I think calling about silly things. Yeah, exactly. Um, but obviously, it was amazing to speak to you. Um, what I am saying, are you moving to the UK or was it for advice in Australia? Australia, yeah. Yeah. Oh my God, that's amazing. That actually like, feels me like a bit of like, oh my God, I'm in Australia. <laughs> I'm helping yeah. with the Australian market. Yeah, you are. But- <laughs> oh bless you well enjoy your day um if you are looking on moving what i am saying to everyone is please 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 stay in contact with me on say home please um just message me when you've got your new home whatever i'd love to see and i'd love to see if we can get some more people well get you the same people back on in like six months time or 12 months time and be like look they actually took my advice and they're there they got it (laughs) all right it was so nice to meet you have the most have the best day Right, guys, um, my final lovely guest that is going to be joining me today um, is... Um, I just want you guys to know I'm not going to be bringing her onto camera. Um, she is an incredibly strong woman, somebody that messaged me um, and straight away I wanted to hear her story, help her as much as I possibly could. Um, and it's a tough one. It's, it's definitely a tough one. And it's things that actually we, and most of us and some of us will actually not even think about in day-to-day life. And actually, I'll be honest, some of us don't even bat an eyelid or think about it in our passing day, but people are living through it. So if you don't mind running us through your story, um, and obviously I will help as much as I can. Um, I'm going to leave it up to you for a minute. So... Where to begin? Uh, I met in 2017. Um, I was 19 years old. He was immediately from the get-go uh, showing red flags. But I think at the time, I was so, like, that desperate to be loved. Uh, like, just anyone who showed me any attention, like, like, to be serious with me, like, to settle down with me, I just jumped straight at it. And he, he was about eight years older than me. And literally, I just... Um, I didn't think of anything other than the fact that he was wanting to be with me. So I was like, right, we'll roll with this. Immediately, red flags. He made me leave my house and move into his mum's house with him because I was living in a shared house and he didn't trust that there was other males in the property with me. So I did that and then immediately fell pregnant. Three months later, throughout the whole pregnancy, it was um, abuse, shouting, just so much uh, abuse throughout the whole pregnancy. Um, gave birth and then we moved into our flat together. And from that, that was hard. My dad actually got diagnosed with cancer when my daughter was three months old and he died when she was five months old. So I had a baby, lost my dad and had two operations. She was delivered a month early by cesarean and had a breast reduction as well when she was six months. So all in the same six months, mm. I went through quite a bit. And um, he was just awful the whole time. So, obviously, I'm trying to get away from him, but it's hard with a newborn and having just lost a parent. It's like my head wasn't straight. I needed support, and I just wasn't getting any. Um, and so then, yeah, and then we got we went into lockdown, and I went to live with my mum, and he went to live with his mum. Yeah. And that was great. And our daughter was going and coming from sharing between us. It got to the point where we couldn't do it anymore. Like, I couldn't live at my mum's. I was literally sleeping on the floor. There was no space for me there. So I just, we got a house together. We joined tenancy and we put, because we, we both worked, it wasn't enough to, like, I couldn't get it on my own and he couldn't get yeah. a place on his own. So we had to join the joint tenancy to move in together. Biggest 
fucking mistake of my entire life was coming on a joint tenancy with this man. Because <laughs> obviously, I can't tell him to leave. No. Um, he can't tell me to leave. And it was, um, yeah, so that was when it properly all got really bad. Um, police being called here three times a month. Like, when I say a month, it's because I'll only call them if it's like, I really can't, can't deal with yeah. But countless times he's been let back, not enough evidence, not enough evidence, not enough evidence. And it's just really, really a shitty situation when you feel trapped and, like, scared in your own home. This is my house. Like, literally everything in this house belongs to me, from the TV, the sofa, the bed, like, the washing machine. Like, everything came from me, my wages, my family. And he's was just constantly, constant just constant abuse that's financial abuse controlling money emotional abuse mental abuse physical abuse every kind of abuse you can imagine and um it's just it's just awful not being able to like because he's his house as well as mine even though he never paid a penny towards the rent um because his name is on the tenancy i was just stuck just yeah. trapped so honestly i don't i, I can't even begin <laughs> to imagine what you've been through and i'm so sorry that you've had to go through it um it is unfortunately uh, there's so many strong, but it'll make you a stronger woman and that's all that you can take from this um you can be at your rock rock bottom but there's only one way you can go from there isn't there and that is up and one thing that you can forever be grateful to him for if you can call it him um is obviously yeah. your beautiful daughter or son that you have yeah. together um so for that, we'll obviously be forever grateful. Um, it's really hard because for me, a lot of people don't know where where to go with this. Um, and a lot of people have come to me in the past and been in that situation. Um, but unfortunately, because you're, due, you're tied to a tenancy agreement, it's really hard for you, for us to accept you as a tenant because you already have legal obligation. And a lot of what people don't realise is actually your agent or your landlord is there to be a support system as well for anything. I think anyone you go and explain the situation to would be a monster just to turn their back on you. And actually what the best situation to do for you, which you probably wouldn't have even thought of doing, would either be, do you rent for a landlord or do you rent for an agency? Private tenants. You're a private tenant. So it would be to go to your landlord or to your agent if you were renting explain the situation and ask them to serve you notice interesting so say to them this is my situation i don't want to serve notice because otherwise he's going to know that i've served notice however i really need your help because i can't stay in this situation and actually i really need you to serve us notice so it would be that both of you would leave the property. Um, and if you can afford the property on your own, and if you can prove that it's been you that's paying the rent, you can prove that it's been this you. Is this is literally the exact thing. So, like, I can go and buy Barclays right now and literally type in to show you that every month on the same date, same time, I've paid the rent in full. Yeah, and so you actually rent through an agency. So you actually are a managed tenant. So yeah. that's even better because sometimes some sometimes a landlord might be like, oh no, you're paying the rent, but an agent will definitely um, say, look, okay, we understand the situation. They will certainly, I'm pretty much 99.9% sure they will serve you notice. And you could even yeah. say to them, look, I want to stay, and but for your safety, I probably would say it's not best for you to stay there anyway. Um, yeah. But obviously, but that would be my advice. And a lot of people wouldn't even think to do that. They'd just feel like they're stuck. Yeah. You're, the, you're the first person said to me to ask for a notice because the whole time I was saying to them, like, obviously I can afford to stay here. I'm the one who works. He's unemployed. So I've worked full time and I can actually stay here. He can't. So they said to us, in order for him to be removed from the tenancy, he has to actually write any more to us and remove himself from the yeah. tenancy. Until, until he does that, you basically, you can't remove him. I said, okay, well, I'm telling him, please, like, just take us off. We can't live in this situation. No, no, no. Obviously, everything, no. Like, just trying to make my life as hard as possible. So, like, in the end, I, like, I said to them, like, basically, I'll leave and he stays. And he's like, they, he, they said he's not allowed to stay. He's unemployed. He can't afford to stay in the house. So, basically, it's we all leave 
or he just leaves. So now he's not even thinking about his kid, like, losing her bedroom, she's, we're losing our house, because mm. he just won't remove himself from the tenancy. But thank God, fingers crossed, my granddad passes referencing to be my guarantor, and then hopefully when he's off of bail, he'll come back to an empty house, and I won't even be here. You won't That's the thing, isn't it? And unfortunately, it's one of those things that if you were there, a relationship like that you obviously you you don't know like you don't know what what he'll but pull Mary, you don't know if he'll, well, he'll just stay around you don't know if you'll even be able to leave the house you, you don't know so for yeah. your safety it's best for you to leave and obviously there are some also I don't know if you've been in contact a lot of the time as well I know I have so many people and personally I think to myself I, I can contact them because I feel a bit embarrassed but there are amazing charities out there definitely like Refuge and Women Aid um, they are amazing solace um, that will definitely give you advice and help you because you are a woman being abused with a small child at the end of the day and nobody deserves to be in that situation but my first and foremost if obviously all this I, I hope to God it doesn't but if it I hope to God it does all go through for me, but if it doesn't, then have the option with and have that open conversation with your agent of asking them to serve you notice. And even to the point where you can say, look, guys, either you don't serve me notice, I'm asking you to serve me notice, if you don't serve me notice, and I will just stop, you can even say I will stop paying the rent, so you have to serve me notice. I don't want to do that. But I, you have to put your well-being first. In the position, yeah. Yeah, and for me, that would be your first port of call is to have that conversation with your agent and say, I would like you to serve us all notice. Um, this is, But make sure you obviously also follow up with an email and just say this was a confidential chat, regardless of who calls regarding the tenancy. I do not want it disclosed that it was me that asked for this, okay? Love that. Thank you so much. You are the... I didn't know that was an option. Yeah. <laughs> but honestly what I've said to everyone as well please 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 stay in contact with me on Fay Home I really want to hopefully fingers crossed have a chat with you all in like six months time see where you all are um, and hopefully have some better news and everyone can have like a little check catch up and everyone can see where we are is that alright? Yeah, hopefully yeah I should yeah if all goes to plan then next time we speak I should be in the new place away from him so. <laughs> well that is the dream that is the dream but it's keep... the dream I'm working towards this goal come on 2020 yeah, that manifest that shit is happening yes <laughs> you are a star thank you so so much oh, for coming oh, on well, thank you so much and I literally just before I go just or even my sister asked me she said tell her we love her and Freddie <laughs> you Freddie we love Teddy and Faye like we, we honestly you guys we oh. just the only thing we love more than you is you and Teddy together. You oh, here he is. So well, I don't actually know where he's in playing bloody FIFA. Big Ted! <laughs> Oh, he's in playing FIFA. Oh, literally. No, all right. You guys, honestly, just the bed. We was oh, greeting for you the whole time. Thanks, and my mum was like, and I was telling her, I was like, she messaged me sort of the abuse situation. My mum's like, the amount of abuse she received from everyone when she was on that show, she'll fucking understand you. She was like, well, oh, that was good. That was amazing. Was like, Do you know what? That's the thing as well. And that word is thrown around way too easily about abuse. Um, you know, I, 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 I know where you're coming from. Just yourself. On that show, I'm really if I'm just going to shout at someone, I'm, I'm going to shout at them. I'm really we sorry. That's not abuse in my eyes. Like, we love it. <laughs> Bless you so much. I mean, if you can't handle an argument, you definitely can't handle me. Hey, love. Oh, bless her. Well, best of luck. And please, please, please stay in contact. Bye, love. Bye, Gorge. Bye. 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 So, guys, that was the amazing um what a brave brave girl woman to come on and just openly talk about um her situation and be able to have that brutal honest conversation that actually a lot of us like I say you don't even think about people going through that on day-to-day -day life and actually is there something that we can help as agents is there something that we can help as just human beings, really. Um, you know, I recommended some charities to um, Women's Aid, Refuge, Solace. Um, and if anyone here, you know, even can donate £5, £12, I know it means the, the, the world to all of them. Um, but yeah, so that one's... Um, that one was a bit of a hard one. Because <laughs> our little girl was... Um, 
and it's just hard because you just think these, pe these there's such strong people out there. I told you this wasn't just going to be a normal home again. <laughs> anyway, I've got to go because I've got to go see big tattoos. <laughs> I'm going to be in tears in a minute, but I hope you enjoyed the YouTube. Um, I hope it helped as many people as it possibly could. Um, and I can't wait to do some more next week. <laughs>